Good afternoon. Mansfield Park is the venue for this edition of Rugby Special from Scotland. It's the Pringle 100th Hoik Sevens. A big day in the history of this famous Border Rugby Club, who themselves have achieved some remarkable feats down over the years in the Border 7-a-side game. Now, despite some call-offs, some disappointing call-offs from their original guest list, Hoik have still managed to muster a formidable array of talent. Randwick are here from Australia, Bristol and Wakefield are here from England, there's a strong Pringles President Seven, and of course Gala are here as well. They were winners at their own Sevens a fortnight ago and at Melrose last Saturday. So there's a recipe there for some cracking rugby ties. In the opening tie of the afternoon, Kelso were strong winners over Heriot by 36 points to 12. A try by Gary Armstrong in extra time took Jed through 26-21 against Selkirk. In a major upset, Langham put out Edinburgh Aki 17-12. In the All-Edinburgh Clash, Stuart Melville FP ran out comfortable winners over Watsonians, 31 points to 7. The teams there obviously finding the firm under foot conditions much more to their liking than the Melrose mud a week ago. Now the second round gave us our first opportunity to see the home club Hoik in action against Kelso. And also the guest sides, Crochet's Welsh 7 looked impressive against GHK, Randwick looked promising, and of course there were high hopes of Gala. This is Stanger. Stanger, nicely on to Hay. Hay looking for support now and he gets it from Reed the scrum half. He's chased by Rock for it, out to Turnbull. Turnbull has got Stanger outside and Stanger angled his run beautifully. That's the first try of the time. And it was a super bit of angling of a sprint by Tony Stanger. Caught there by Reed. Good bit of running there by Gordon Lane. Gordon Lane caught by Inter Ruxborough. That's a lovely Kelso try. Very good running off the ball by all the Kelso players there. Adam Ruxborough's third try of the tournament so far. That's McRae on to uh, Hay, but Tony Stanger was far too far away. This is Kevin Reed, the scrum half. Nicely out, McRae did a very good bit of running there, and now it's up to Sutton. Sudden against Bayer, and Sudden has the legs of him. The big fella whose father played over a dozen times for Scotland to pop forward has given Hoyt the lead again. And unceremonious tackling there by uh, the Kelso player, but it's Derek Turnbull. He's knocked down as well. Bayer feeds it out, and it's Aitchison who's gone, and he's absolutely clear. Being chased there by Stanger, but Graham Aitchison has uh, made it all right and that was a very good counter-attack try indeed by Kelso once again McRae to Hay this is Turnbull over the elaborations are big and Turnbull's going himself and I think he's going to make it that was a very good score for one moment it looked as if he'd come the wrong way because there was a huge overlap on the left but the big international flanker made it this is Roxburgh and Roxburgh can shift very good bit of work indeed there, and a splendid tackle, so important when Rockford is on the move. Aitchison going, Aitchison has got fast read, Jim Hay in on the tackle. The referee has given the try, and such an important one, Graham Aitchison's second try of the tie. And it was beautiful handling here. Punching tackle from Jim Hay, but Aitchison, notice how he swerved so well and left Scott McRae for dead there. Jim Hayes tackle, a bit late. Aitchison, you can see the breeze slightly against him. It's a sort of northerly, but doesn't seem to have affected him much. It's a lovely kick, but just past that post. And so there are only two points in it, and uh, I reckon they've only about half a minute to go. Now it's out to Webb. Now everybody would want to see Glenn Webb moving. He's the most stylish runner, as you can see. Still only 32. I say 32. He's running so beautifully there. Glenn Webb still, and he's going to score the first try of the tie. And Glenn Webb, the internationalist, the one internationalist in Crosby's well side, puts them ahead with a super try and a lovely bit of Mizzy running. Lovely catch there by Mark Sowerby. This great big forward and uh, lovely running there. The interception almost by Gary Armstrong. Scully feeds on. It could be a try for Nick Green, and indeed it is. Nick Green the scorer, a second try for Wakefield, they're in the lead again. And so uh, David Scully there with the crew cut. What a little tactician he is, the long throw in though to Kirkpatrick. There's a real overlap here as Scott takes it. Scott 
giving it out to Amos. Now Amos must take on Slightorn. Out there to McKechnie. McKechnie going. Across comes Harris. But McKechnie's going to score. It's a vital try for Jed Forrest. His third try of the afternoon so far. But the most important he's scored. Now just let's uh, have a look at this scrimmage. Kivaiti is on the far side for Curry. He's guarding uh, or trying to cause trouble on that uh, side. And he got out very quickly indeed as it goes along to Nikila from Ryan. Ryan on the loop. Jorgensen is outside him, Ryan past Devaiti, past Plum. Head on there to Jorgensen, it's out to Cheka. Cheka turning on, he's the biggest of the whole lot of them, and taken eventually by Simon Morgan, and that's a lovely try by him, and uh, that may well be the one that ties it up for Randwick. Melrose a seven not to be underrated, but at the moment being harassed and hounded a bit by Langham, who... Uh, created uh, something of a record in the respect that they got through the first round by beating Edinburgh Academicals and he is Grieve, Mark Grieve, known as Jinky and he's clean through from that scrimmage and that's really brought the crowd to their feet clapping and cheering all round the ground Mark Grieve who scored a lovely try also against Edinburgh Academicals in the first tie and that's a very important score the crowd loved it and so there are some of the Swedish girls who are playing in the Women's World Cup here and they're staying up at Langham and you can see how delighted they are with that score by Mark Greve. Langham with a problem at the line out of course because uh, Mel is up to very big men but they, they survived it. Taken initially by Cottrell, this is Carol Hogg. Out there to Neil White, White again held by Basnet trying to get it into Gary Parker and Parker has got it and he scored good following up by him Parker cutting across the face of everybody that was a knock forward the referee playing advantage Doddy Weir has it and Weir is away and that could be the winning try Doddy Weir breaking out of the tackle and cantering home a vital try that one for Melrose because time is virtually up remarkably close game Doddy it certainly was, yes, uh, right to the last seconds. We were very lucky to even score that try. Realistically, we should have maybe been out because Langham took the game right to us and the tackles were crunching and we couldn't get the ball away, which is very important. Sevens, but saying that Langham had an extra game and it gives a chance to get a second win, which uh, we never had the, the chance to get, so hopefully we're going from here. Good engagement there by Burham. You are putting pressure on them all the way. Bit out there from Andy Williams. Now it's Nibs once again. Now watch this fella David John go. He's done 10.6 for the 100 and this is how he's done it. Now, oh yes, what a lovely move. And Brian Eason looked as if he had him tapped. But in fact, the swerve inside did it. David John with his second try. And that surely ties it up for Bristol. On there to Brian Lockett. Now it's uh, Danny Ball who's come on a replacement in this uh, second tie for Murray Thompson. Appleson going in, this is with Harry, and that's Appleson streaking through, and so Mark Appleson scores his second try of the tie. Well, we didn't, you know, you don't really know what to uh, expect when you just throw a bunch of guys together, so uh, we were just happy with the win. I think Gal will be tough in the next round. And Sterling County, once again Logan, who's proving so dangerous, so manoeuvrable, Williamson caught, Crooks there, nicely to Maitland. Now a chance for Amos and Gregor Townsend. Gregor Townsend, he should enjoy running on this firm pitch, but John Jarden has him. Well caught there. Interception by Elliot. David Elliot is away, and I don't think Jim Maitland can catch him. David Elliot, formerly of Langham. His father was Christie the internationalist. And what a score that is for Stirling County. Neil Crooks. Lovely switch there to Townsend. Now Townsend chased by John Jarden. The pass goes astray. If Kenny Logan can pick this up, he could be home. Amos coming across, but Kenny Logan going, and Logan is away. He's lost half his shot, but he won't mind about that, because that is a tremendous uh, try. A second try for Ken Logan. And this the shock of the tournament. Gregor Townsend again with the wild pass, which just went nowhere. And watch Logan in... And then out again, and half held, and out again, beautiful running by him. 
That really is a superb effort. Dodge chased by Logan. And Logan gets him second time. Now from Maitland. Along to Amos. There's a chance on here for Gallas. Farquharson goes. Out to Neil Crooks. Crooks going for the corner. It could be a try for Corcoran. But he's held just short as well. And that has been magnificent tackling. Although the try is eventually given to Neil Crooks. But it has been superb covered by Sterling. Man after man put down there. Ian Corcoran put down, but Neil Crooks eventually managed to batter his way over, but a little too late. A remarkable result, really. Well, it's good, well. It's good. Surface was good. Got a chance to run at them. Put a lot of pressure on them. I mean, a big difference made them. Instead of us making mistakes, they were doing them, so it was good for a change. Some fascinating ties there in round two. An arrow win for Hoyk over Kelso. Crosshies had no problems in that big 31-0 win over GHK. Randwick looked good in their 21-7 win over Curry. And Langham almost provided the upset of the tournament, but finally lost by the single point against Melrose. Bristol and the President Sevens were both impressive guest winners, but the surprise of the early stages was Stirling County's comprehensive rout of Gala 26-12. And so this was the mouth-watering quarter-finals lineup. Hoyk against Crosshies, Jed against Randwick, Melrose against Bristol, and the President Seven against Stirling County. First up, the host side Hoyk against the guest club Crosshies Welsh in the commentary box, Bill McLaren. They played uh, almost four minutes of the first half, and Hoyk a bit short of electric pace here, Tony Stanger, but they're sudden going, and sudden is clear, and nobody will catch him. Not even Booth. So Keith Sutton scores the first try of the quarter-final. McRae half through. The support coming there from Reed On to Jim Hay. A chance here. A stumble goes. He's got Stanger outside him. It's a question of the timing of the pass. Tumble on to Stanger. Marvellous try. A brilliant bit of work by Tumble. I thought for one moment he'd gone too far. The spectators are thrilled with that one. It was a great score by any standards. Danger still, Hoyt with all the ball, it's Reed once again, on there to Rennie to Hay, a chance for Sutton, and Sutton has gone, and once again it's Booth trying to catch him, but Sutton's second try of the tie, his third of the tournament, and Hoyt is stretching away. Loud blast, penalty against the Welshman for holding on the floor, Sutton out to Stanger, and Stanger is going to score, Jeffrey could do nothing about it. Tony Stanger too with his third try of the tournament. That's the kick through there by Scott McRae and Jim Hay is up so quickly again. Jim Hay who's uh, one of the Scotland Scottish Rugby Union's uh, youth development officers. But Glenn Webb is away and look at the sprinting style of that fellow. Big and strong like a 400 metres runner. Lovely try by Glenn Webb, his second of the tournament. This Varney, Varney is quick, he was shepherded well, Jeffrey, Jeffrey the winger inside to Varney, that's a brilliant try, the Welshmen are back in the time, superb work there, especially by Adrian Varney of Neath, the scorer, and David Reese is through, and he's going right to the post, sudden after him, and Reese has scored, and so the Welshmen are really back with a great chance. It's a great result for the club though that, isn't it? Certainly it is, makes yeah. the it's, Well, they're in the semi-finals now, so after last week, you know, we were pretty disappointed, so our own tournament, special occasion, so we're glad they're in the semi-finals, so I'll play for now. Is it more difficult or easier to play in front of your own crowd? Is it more pressure? But very difficult because of the expectation, you know. Hoyk have been quite successful in sevens over the years, most of their own sports, so when you're at home, the crowd expects you to do something. But you're getting better, aren't you? Improving, yeah. Yeah, we're getting used to the game now. <laughs> now it's Nikila. See them switching it to Cheka. Out there, the number one, David Kelleher, and he's had a tremendous tournament so far. He's so quick. And Kelleher in for another try. I say another because that's his third try of the afternoon. And he's also knocked over five conversions. So uh, David Kelleher, the blindside flanker in the 15, is doing well. McKechnie okay, still, where's the support for him? Gets it out to Kevin Liddle. Liddle going out there to Scott. Gareth Scott, great cover tackling by Brad Bark on to Kirkpatrick. There is an overlap out there as Gary Armstrong goes. Armstrong is switching side. And a lovely try for Callum Brown. 
He's gone right behind the post, so uh, it's going to be an easy conversion. Callum Brown, the scorer, from that lovely switch pass by Gary Armstrong. So the betting here at the 100 Hoyk Rugby Sevens, Randwick the evens favourite, Bristol the second favourites 2-1. to one. And it's Bristol certainly ahead by seven points to nil against Melrose as they prepare to start the second half through Ralph Nibs. Nibs gets it going and Doddy Weir waits and knocks it back and uh, well, they've been anticipating that all the way along and Tim Griffin is the fella who cottoned onto it, one of the two really big forwards here that uh, Bristol have. And that was, well, a piece of toffee. Robbie Brown, Graeme Shield, Neil White, caught there by John, on there to Graeme Shield, that's the try between the posts that Melrose have been looking for. Graeme Shield, the scorer, and that will give them heart, you can show that it can be done, and the kick is an easy one. Ralph Nibbs hanging it up very well, Doddy Weir, up high, Whitehead goes in on it, and that's a very crafty bit of play by Whitehead if he can get there before Graeme Shield and Whitehead pushed him away but was it shoulder to shoulder Whitehead given the try and so the referee decided that the push was fair Erickson to Appleson Appleson Ian Morrison up in support leading on there to Wehari Wehari chased by Flocker but Wehari's going to make it and so that's the first try of this uh, quarter-final match, we Harry the scorer, Jardin's timing of the passes was uh, lacking there and Andrew Nickel goes, Nickel with the dummy and it'll be a good score there for Appleson and so the counter-attack try, Andrew Nickel making it for Mark Appleson and that uh, seals it once and for all for the present, we Harry, caught by Jardin, interception by Williamson, Williamson to Elliot. Elliot worked the ball away well to Williamson and it's Ken Logan who scores. A very good try. They manipulated the ball very well in short space there. And it was a nice try to, to see, although it won't make much difference to the outcome. So in the first quarter final, Hoyk 26-19 winners over Crosshies, Welsh 7. Randwick looked sharp in their 21-14 victory over Jed Forrest. But Bristol didn't quite show their best rhythm when they beat Melrose 19-7. However, Bristol will face the President's Seven in the second semi-final. The President's Seven were 24-14 victors over Stirling County. Now, the first semi-final had the Mansfield crowd totally enthralled. It was between the host club, Hoyk, and the Australian guest side, Randwick. And so they played just a minute of this tie, seven and a half minutes each way, and this will be a bruising encounter, and Randwick have taken a ball against the Putin, and Lloyd Walker feeds out to Neokila. Neokila and Walker, both playmakers. Walker not uh, with any pace that he had of old, but that's very nicely away indeed to Scott McRae, Jim Hay, and all kinds of trouble there for Hoy, as it is knocked all over the place. Yes, there were two knocks on, one by each side, and Ranwick get the put in. That's Neokila, who's played 11 times for Australia. A wing comes centre, 30 years old now, got his first cap against Scotland in 88 at Murrayfield. And so a very dull afternoon here with the uh, rain spitting every now and then. Brad Burke, another of the, the internationalist in this uh, Randwick side to boot in. Randwick with a tremendous record. They produced eight Australian captains. They've had over 80 of their players capped and 119 have played for New South Wales. Brad Burke going and Burke has scored. Well there, an awkward ball that Hoyt seemed to have taken against the head, but in point of fact, the referee played advantage. You can see there, it, 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 it came out from the feet all right, and Burke certainly controlled the ball well and had the pace to get there. Kelleher, well it pays off. Another nice conversion by Kelleher. He's building up quite a total. And uh, Randwick are leading by seven points to nil, and they've played, well, they're halfway through the first half. Crowd uh, all over the place, and uh, thoroughly enjoying some great rugby football. Stand pretty well filled. All the seats were taken a good few weeks ago. And here, once again, it was Cheka leading out. This is Neokila. 
And it's possession, of course, that Hoyt badly needs as Kelleher feeds out to Burke. That's out to Walker. Walker, the playmaker, look at that lovely bit of work there and Shaker going, but he's well held. Now it's Burke once again. And a real chance there for the fast man, that's Scott Nielsen. Scott Nielsen, and he's caught, but he got over. Did he get the ball down? Ray Megson was there, but he may have made a couple of movements. Now he's turned round and he's given the try. It was fed out there initially from Bill Wiley. And then Scott Nielsen, the 23-year-old, chased by Sutton. Now what Sutton got him, just short of the line, but almost pulled him over. It was a momentum try. Just a couple of minutes to go to half-time. And David Kelleher in uh, no rush to take his kick away out there in the left corner. I don't think it has the legs. Well, it has the legs all right. It looked pretty tired to me, but what a splendid kick that was. And what an important kick, because it means now that Hoyk have got to convert both their tries. If they manage to get back into it. We start by McCray. And there again, the Australians winning ball to Lloyd Walker from Kelleher. Neil Keeler going. Brad Burke. Look at the way they manipulate the ball. Lovely passes. They're quite happy to move it behind their backs. And Chaker, the big forward going. Derek Tumble in. The pick up by Rennick. Chance there. If there's an overlap out on the outside there, Tony Stanger going. Stanger through. What a beautiful movement by the big man, Tony Stanger. If you watch, he went right and then left in a twinkling. Jim Riley there of Hoyk is thrilled. His dad used to be a great referee in the past. Neil Keeler caught. And then if you watch here, Rennick feeding out. It got eventually to Scott McRae. Now the thing to watch here is Stanger. He, now look at that. Out and then in and away he went. Brad Burke couldn't catch him. That was a very important try. And Kevin Reed slots the conversion and Hoyk are back in the fight. You can see there that it's a pretty cool day and uh, has been dampish as well. But a very big crowd indeed all around the ropes. One of the biggest crowds I've ever seen at, uh, at a Hoyk rugby event. And that includes uh, matches against touring sides. So Scott Nielsen has gone off the field injured from the Randwick side. And uh, Damien Ryan has come on. Lloyd Walker with the kick through. Derek Turnbull couldn't hold it. Jim Hay did. Now it's worked out there nicely along to McRae. Pray to change it to Sutton. Sutton going. Sutton just caught in the corner there. Chaker was the man who held on to him first of all. Neil Keeler in trouble. Did he knock it forward? Referee decides not. Kelleher going, on there to Walker, three Hoyt men to one there, but it's a matter of whether they win it or not, Sutton winning it back, now it's McRae, McRae jinking and twisting and turning, who's going with him, McRae still taken out there by Neil Keela. and a penalty to Hoyt in front of the post, just watch this, this was McRae, the youngster just 19, now the little chip through and then boom, out you go. Greg Oliver there on the right as we look at the picture, there's the replacement, he's not needed. Jim Hay working it out, Turnbull very nicely on to Rennick. Rennick along the line there nicely to Kevin Reed. Kevin Reed. Brian Rennick going. Out to Neil Keeler, he's chased uh, by Hay. Neil Keeler and caught by Hay, the ball went forward, referee playing advantage. Sudden getting it out there and players being taken out without the ball all over the place and it's going to be a try for Damien Ryan if he can outpace Kevin Reed. Brad Burke is up there with him, the dummy to Neil Keeler. Neil Keeler now, chance for Hoy because Rennie goes, Rennie going, going to get a bounce, he will end. Clapping all round the ground. 
It was a splendid try by Rennick. Brian Rennick who played for the Scottish schools out at Hoy Kai School. And see here how Australia really were in pole position with Neil Keeler getting it there. But it was the attack there by Norman, by, by Sutton, which uh, gave Rennick the chance. Now, he needed a good bounce. He got it. Chaker couldn't catch him. Vital try. So as Kevin Reed converts that try and ties the score, at 14 points all, Derek Tumble has gone off the field, injured from Hoyk, the internationalist is gone, and John Graham, the youngster, comes on in his place, the 21-year-old. Tony Stanger, out to Sudden, Sudden with Nia Keeler, Jim Hay once more, John Graham again, Kevin Reed still, Graham going, just needs a good hoof up the field here when, when Fields would do it. Ryan with the kick on. And so it's gone out of play. Hoyt finding no way through there. The referee has given a penalty try. And we'll have a good look at that. Crucial decision. Ryan had put it on. And then Kelleher kicked, and the tackle was late. So through it goes, and uh, Randwick are in the lead by 21 points to 14. Lloyd, tumultuous game, the host side there into the final. Yes, yeah, good, it's good feeling. We've got a few injuries, which it puts a bit of damper on it, but we're in the final, and we'll give our best shot there. So high drama there as Randwick go through to the final, but who would join them there? Well, the second semi-final between Bristol and the Pringles President's Seven was another wonderful tie which had the crowd totally involved. Bill McLaren picks up the story. Nickel. Erickson. Couldn't link with Nickel. Now it's John. Griffin. Nibscott. Whitehead, lovely uh, working of the pass. The way they wait the pass is quite superb at times. Now it's nicely back there. This is Appleson, caught by Nibs. Erickson, along the line to Walker. Walker, big rangy forward, trying to run outside his man there, but Andy Williams has stuck with him. Walker still, and now there's a chance for Chris Dolby. Now this is all about peace, and he can, and he's gone. Chris Dolby with the first try of this semi-final. Nice bit of weaving running by him. The Gala Wing three quarter, just 19 years old. Walker did so well here to stay in his feet and work the ball out of the tackle. And notice how Doglish maneuvered and weaved and switched and then was clear. Ian Morrison was up in support, wasn't needed. And Stephen Wehari formerly of Kelso. We Harry with the successful conversion. And so uh, the Pringles president seven are seven points ahead and they're halfway through the first half. But of course you can never uh, rule out this Bristol side because they have power and pace and uh, really what they need is the ball. This is the uh, orchestra leader as it were, Ralph Nibs, who's played for England under 23 at one time. That was almost 11 years ago. Erickson feeds Morrison. We hurry. This is Nickel. Nickel, who's quick. Now the big fella's coming across. David John is coming across to take him. Nickel beautifully in there to Erickson to We hurry. We hurry going for the corner. Lovely try by We hurry. Craig Barrow made a valiant effort to catch him, but was just too late. And so this uh, President Seven are really linking together some lovely passages. It started with the forwards, first of all, with Harry out there, and then Nickel did an awful lot of the clever work. Took two men out there, and then watch how he pulled David John across, waited until the very last moment, and then one-handed flicked it in. Erickson was the link man, and with Harry was the man who had the pace to finish it off. 
That's Andrew Walker, who's six feet three and a half, so he's a very handy fella to have in sevens. He can run, he can handle, and he can work ball at the line out as well. However, that was the uh, big fellow Craig Barrow who took it on, and now it's Andy Williams. Andy Williams helped by Tim Griffin. And Barry Whitehead uh, in there as well. But once again, the present seven have won possession. And once again, it's the London Scots working some lovely play here. Is Goldish the wing, then Appleson going. John Harris is him. Interception there by Alistair Severimuto. And that's cut the deficit, and that's a very important score indeed for Bristol. It brings them back into the tie. The 24-year-old, who's a regular centre in the 15, along with, uh, with Ralph Nibbs. And, well, if you watch here, Appleson feeding, and then that pass from Chris Doglish intercepted in a flash of light by Savaremuto, and he was away. Nibs. And so Nibs has been knocking them over pretty well. That's uh, what his fifth conversion, and it pulls it back to 12 points to seven. So uh, the present seven know that they can't allow this Bristol side too much uh, ball because it's a, it's a club, of course, with a great tradition and a great record. Appleson with the restart. Beautifully taken there by Craig Barrow. Andrew Nicol. He's clear as he got the pace to go all the way. John coming across. Nicol against John. Nicol has scored. A super tackle by John. But a very good try indeed by Andrew Nicol, who's getting back to full fitness again. He didn't knock it forward. Now there he felt the space. And despite the fact that he knew John was coming across, notice how he angled his run away. He still was prepared to run and take the tackle. A brave bit of work there by Scotland Scrum Half from Dundee High School FB. Andy Williams, this is him again. Big burly fellow. Couldn't get the uh, pass away out of the tackle by Wehari. Still on halfway, now a chance there as it goes to Craig Barrow, Ralph Nibbs, Craig Barrow a chance, up goes Walker, Barrow still, great lanky six feet six fella this, look at the dummy, and they all went to take the man and Barrow is going all the way, that's an incredible score by this huge fellow, as I say six feet six and almost 15 stones, one of four schoolmasters in this Bristol squad, and he duped everybody. We just what? He was in all kinds of difficult situations here. But firstly, the tackle by Ronnie Erickson didn't work. And then the little dummy there did work. And then he still had rally. He showed the ball again. He gave a hand off and he was in the clear. It was all deception and kid on. And we Harry couldn't stop him. I reckon they played five minutes, two and a half minutes to go. The President Springle 7 leading by 17 points to 12, and we Harry takes it. Appleson, the kick through, and guess who goes back there? Craig Barrow, all six feet six of him. A chance there, and it's going to be a try for Chris Dalglish. That could be the deciding try. There's still time yet, but he's got close enough to the post, and uh, an excellent score it was. Just sheer hounding of the player in possession that made it. There was the ball, out to, the ball going out to Appleson. The kick through was awkward. Now, Craig Barrow, they say this lanky fellow got back there and did well to tap it clear. But Ralph Nibbs was unfortunate. He seemed to trip over his own feet and fell backwards. And the ball went to Chris Dalglish. The 19-year-old had nobody to catch him. I think he's going to blow for full time, and indeed he has. And so the uh, President Springle 7 has got through to the final. How does the prospect of Randwick uh, entice you? Oh, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, you, you get better every time, especially, you know, we're good players, as I say, but it's just the teamwork's coming now as well. And we're looking forward to it. The crowd will be behind us, and uh, that's what we can do. So, wonderful uh, atmosphere here. It's been a festival atmosphere. We've had all kinds of things going on during the week. Tourist Association, the Chamber of Trade, the District Council interested. The start of the final then. 
And Kelleher getting it started there, and Ian Morrison knocks it back, and it's nickel. This is Appleson. Out to Chris Dodlish. Chris Dodlish lays it down, but immediately the Australians, who've been so ferocious in ball winning, and it's Neil Keeler. He's such a sinuous runner, this lad, and full of rugby football. You see that cross kick straight to Chaker, and Chaker being hounded by Ericsson. Chaker almost there, and indeed he is there. That is a, an astonishing try, because the big fellow had hardly any room to work in. Michael Chaker, the 27-year-old. And you, if you watch here, Neil Keeler with that beautiful movement, and then that lovely cross kick, it was perfect. Now, he had a lot to do here because Ericsson was at him, one hand off, the gap was closing, another hand off, a third one, and that was missed time, and Chaker was home. A very good score indeed. David Kelleher then, who was man of the tournament at one of the recent sevens in Australia. A study in concentration. They're telling him to hurry up. It looks a very good kick indeed, and indeed it is spot on. So that's a very good hard blow for Randwick right away, leading by seven points to nil, and they've played just under three minutes. So another close-range scrummage for the uh, President Springle 7, whose uh, official in charge is Jerry McGuinness, the former West of Scotland and Hoyk uh, international prop. Andrew Nicholl is clean through. And that was a lovely, typical scrimmage try. It's uh, actually one of the classic tries that used to be seen so often in the olden days when uh, there wasn't so much harassment and breaking away quickly. If you just watch here, the scrimmage provided a nice ball at the back door and Nickel very cleverly feeling the space and with Brad Burke hanging on, made the five metres. This is uh, Stephen Wehari who played great sevens rugby for Kelso in his day and who pops that one over and so they're all tied they played about five minutes just over seven points all Nicole Wihari the change of tactic now Akura Nikila has come across he was uh, he was part sweeping but again a lovely runner and notice how he feels the uh, the distance away but the pressure he is in, in, intense Chaker down Appleson harasses him, he may be penalised for hanging on. Referee waiting for advantage, none accrues. And it's going to be the penalty right enough. But immediate engagement of the opponent in possession there by the President Seven was the vital factor. So ferocious the uh, tackle engagement nowadays. Andrew Nichols saying, come on, 10 metres. We Harry, he's got Nichol with him. Nickel out there and it could be a try for Ericsson and indeed it is Ronnie Ericsson his first score of the afternoon but that's one he'll savour for a while the 22 year old who had a good day at Langham Sevens last season when he scored five tries in a conversion for London Scottish with Harry sense the feet the half overlap on this side and there the timing of the pass by Nickel was perfect and Ericsson did well to come off his right foot like that Big heavy lad, good try. Stephen Wihari, who at one time was the Border School's 100 and 200 uh, metres champion. But in uh, here, stroking it well. The left foot curling it round. And so he's uh, building up quite a tally for this afternoon. And it's 14 points to seven. They've played about eight minutes of the first half. Kelleher with the restart, Walker with the take, a change of tactic that time and it's uh, Ian Morris and this burly flank forward who's been so unlucky with injury this season. Uh, we Harry again changing the tactic and once again it's Neil Keeler who has to come all the way back and he's tiring as we Harry comes up on him. But he's done well, he's found space. Appleson has him, the interception by Wehari, if he gets it out there's a chance here for Dolby. Dolby's going, chased there all the way by Ryan, but another very good try indeed for the President Springle 7, Chris Dolby, his third try of the afternoon. And Wehari had a big hand in it, the crowd thrilled here. 
Neil Keeler looked as if he'd managed to get clear, but Appleson caught him and the pass was intercepted there by Wehari. And then Chris Dalglish needs no second invitation. He's quick. The former border 400 meters record holder. And uh, Ryan just couldn't look at him. Start of the second half by Mark Appleson. And once again, Walker was the big fella who got up there. He's done some very good uh, work at the restart kicks, uh, Andrew Walker. Of course, he's six feet three and a half, and he can run a bit as well. Very good sevens forward. He shared in the London Scottish Triumphs at the Middlesex Tournament. Brad Burke works the ball away. Lloyd Walker to Brad Burke. Now it's out to Neil Keeler. Neil Keeler, he won't get past Chris Jolgish, I shouldn't think. Um, and Mark Appleson did the uh, other bit. Again, Walker, Nickel, Appleson. Good switch there. Could be Appleson again, trying to come inside Neil Keeler. Opened it up. And a kick on there by Andrew Nickel. A great... Uh, battle there with Bill Wiley but the ball had gone forward and so Andrew Nichol who looks to me to be coming into his best form again and of course will be going to Argentina with uh, Scotland during this summer just over a minute of the uh, second half gone here ten minutes each way and a very important ball against the head there the kick on by Appleson Appleson going for it he's got the bounce and Appleson scores his fifth try of the tournament and it was a beautifully judged kick ahead. Couldn't be better. No wonder he's smiling. It uh, just fell into place. It was a good heel against the head that did it. Then we carry. Now look at the little chip kick. It was perfect. Ryan had to turn. Appleson already was past him. All he needed was the bounce. He got it. He's pleased. Just on halfway. Nickel gets another lovely ball. We hurry. Appleson on the dummy run. We hurry still. A chance there though. The pick up by Kelleher. Kelleher chased by Morrison. But Kelleher is going to score. And it's a very important try indeed. Four minutes of the second half gone. And David Kelleher, who's been the top scorer for the uh, Randwick side throughout this tournament. Dappled in the sunshine. And there you would see We Harry caught by Ryan. And then as the ball went loose, there was the pickup by Kelleher. And uh, he took off. He's run so well all afternoon. He was the player of the tournament in a recent sevens tournament in Australia. And uh, that's his fourth try of the afternoon. And David Kelleher away out there on that uh, 22. And lofting it nice and high and straight. And he has kicked well. That's his 10th successful conversion of the afternoon. Lloyd Walker. Switch again to Walker. He's one of the playmakers. Neil Keeler there is another one, but uh, no way through there. However, it's Kelleher once again. And look how quick he is. This is a tremendous breakaway by Brad Burke. Burke going, and it's going to be Ryan chased all the way, this time by Dalglish, but Ryan makes it, and they're cutting back. Damian Ryan with his first try of the afternoon. And they're cutting into the deficit. Brad Burke was the man who made it. The 29-year-old, the internationalist veering away there from Wihari and then looking for uh, whoever was in support. It was Ryan who took it and uh, he needed no second invitation. He really is quick as well. He's 22 years old. Kelleher pulling it round and it's another good one. He has paid his way so handsomely in this tournament. The referee's whistle goes for the end of the time. The Scots have done it. The President's Pringle 7 have won. They're delighted in the stand. Tremendous ovation for them. Great cheer. Kevin McKenzie at the back there who uh, played in one of the ties. They too played some great rugby football. And they battled back. They had a great lead in the final. Looked as if they might lose it.
but then battled back again. And Andrew Nicholl, eight times capped the Scotland scrum half, takes the uh, special trophy. Tremendous one. Yeah, it was a very tough final. Uh, it's a long day, you know, when you get through four ties, obviously the legs are killing you a bit. But we are delighted. We uh, played very well. As I say, we came together perfectly. Mark Appleton, the score with you tries. How come a team coming together so soon, so early can, can do this? I have no idea. I think we had the right blend today. You know, we, we just clicked and things went superb for us. We have, I think we have five London Scottish boys playing in the same team, which kind of helps. We know, we know each other very well. And players like Andy and uh, Chris Douglas, who came in, they did superbly well and just fitted straight into our pattern. So it was, it was really easy in the end. Ian Morris, this must be great for you on the way back. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think I was going to win another game of rugby in my life. That was very nice. I was a midfield general. Fencing <laughs> orders. So the Pringles President Seven, they're deserving winners of the Pringles 100 Hoik Sevens. What a splendid end to a wonderful day of seven-a-side rugby.